Hello, everyone, and welcome to Keswick Chapel, The Chew. My name is Robert Wallace. I'm the lead pastor for this ministry, and I want to welcome you to a year-long series called The Way, His and Ours. This Chew series is going to be based on the sermon series brought to the CFCN congregation every Sunday morning by Pastor Bud Reedy over the course of this year by the same title, The Way, His and Ours. Our foundational passage today is going to come from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. So I encourage you to grab your Bible, a pen and paper, so that you can take notes. And if you're watching this and you're a member of the CFCN congregation, you were in the congregation yesterday, you received a notebook. I want to encourage you to grab that notebook so that you can look at the notes you took from the message yesterday, add to them, or... If you wrote down a note and you want to share it with me, I invite you to do that in the comments or send me a private message. Either way, or you can send me an email, pastorrobert at keswickchapel.com. Be more than happy to engage in a conversation with you. So I hope by now you've grabbed your Bible and you're ready. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Jesus said this, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, We don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This, my friends, is the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks be unto God. This is going to be such a great journey together as we chew on these things and as we dig deeper in God's word. I want to encourage you to take some note of some things. I noticed right away that Jesus was very specific in that, first of all, before Thomas's question, Jesus made a statement and Jesus said this, you know the way to the place where I am going. And Thomas objected, but Jesus then reminded him, saying, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know me and have seen him. So Jesus was saying by seeing Jesus, by knowing who Jesus is, we know who the Father is. And we've seen the Father because we've seen Jesus. This is exactly what he's telling his disciples. So as we come to know Jesus more intimately, and as we grow in our relationship with Jesus, we're growing in our relationship with the Father. And then Jesus makes the point that he is the way. And back over in John chapter 10, verse 9, We read this, Jesus said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture or pasture. So Jesus is clearly telling us that he is the way. Pastor Bud Reedy shared with us seven affirmations about Jesus from Jesus' own lips. And most of them come from John. And I'll share those with you. Let me get back to the right page here in my notes. I encourage you to write down these verses. Some of them we've already we've already mentioned here. But in John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus says two things. First, he says, I am the bread of life. Then he says, I am the light of the world. And then in John chapter 10, verses 7 through 9, Jesus says, I am the door. Or as we read in my version of the NIV, I am the gate. Then in John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection. In John 10, verses 11 through 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. John 15, 1 through 5, Jesus says, I am the vine. 
And then, of course, we read in 14, verse 6, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we're going to focus on Jesus as the way this year. And there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, Jesus reveals that he is the way. That was one of our theological affirmations from Pastor Bud's message yesterday at CFCN. The second affirmation was this, that Jesus expects us to follow him. Did you catch that? In John chapter 14, verse uh, 5, I'm sorry, verse 3. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. In verse 4, you know the way to the place where I am going. So Jesus is telling us that he expects us to follow him. And then lastly, that it's an invitation, that Jesus invites us. Jesus never demands. And likewise, we don't demand of you that you dig deeper, that you spend extra time looking at the different verses that are mentioned in your study Bible, or to go digging with us. We're inviting you on this journey with us as we learn the way firsthand from Jesus out of his word. So I want to encourage you, spend some time today chewing on this, chewing on Jesus is the way. He says so. Write down the questions. What does that mean? How do we get there? Actually, Pastor Bud left us with some questions, and I'll share those with you. had four here very quickly. First of all, why might the disciples have been troubled? What is the benefit of putting one's trust in God? How did Jesus back up his claims? And how does Jesus' exclusive claim affect church evangelism? Is Jesus the way of your life? I pray that he is. So as we Depart one another's company right now. I encourage you to chew on these things today, to pray over these things today, and to ask the Holy Spirit to open your heart and mind to His truth, your eyes that you may see and your ears that you may hear. I pray that you'll have a wonderful day. Go in the peace of God. Blessings to you. Bye for now.